Hey friends, Jeff Allen off the Grid Iron, and today I'm in the shop, and uh, what we're working on is I'm trying to make uh, an ex a takedown smokestack system, I guess, if you will, for my hot tent stove. I haven't been able to find any three inch pipe that's suitable. So what I've come up with is, now I know you're gonna say, yeah, it's galvanized, but what I'm gonna do is for each section, and I've already started here, I'm gonna cut them down into a little more manageable lengths, probably about 14 inch lengths, just like this. And I'm gonna take these lengths and put them in with my my wood in my fireplace and make sure they get a good burn off and then i'm going to spray paint them with uh, some high heat paint basically getting the galvanized off because i know obviously we're not supposed to have uh, be burning galvanized it gives off a harmful harmful odor harmful chemical that we should not be breathing so uh, that's what i'm trying to work on and uh, that way i can take down these links separate them collapse them together and i should have a little bundle that's suitable for uh, kind of maybe even putting inside and transporting inside the the stove itself so uh let's keep going and uh see if this works so i'll provide the link up top but this is my kind of hot tent stove that i made out of an old i guess it was a, a tank for filling kind of party balloons with um, helium but uh, some modifications i did is I put a bit of a shelf bracket along the sides so uh, it really kind of holds and mounts that great. I'm not sure if you can see in there, not, not great lighting. But then I put this half inch steel belting around the inside and screwed it in around the outside, but that sandwiched in this stove rope or stove gasket. So now when it closes, it just makes a much better seal. I also put a little uh, extension here on the handle so it is a little easier to handle and what I'm working on is uh, putting these kind of these steel kind of galvanized extensions here that take down and we're going to mount them like so onto um, just hitting my light up top here kind of a two-hand operation so that's going to mount on like so but I'll have multiple lengths so it'll be able to kind of rise up from the stove and out through a hole in my hot tent. So that's what we're working on right now. Making multiple lengths of these extensions. So with each of these extensions, we can just kind of stack them on top of each other. I'm trying to kind of take a, a file and or the, uh, you know, a little belt sander, the bench grinder, and file off these these tough bur these burrs on the edge, and then they should go together like this, making sure the seam doesn't come apart, and just like that. So what we do is start with. I think these are these are three feet, thirty inches, and we're coming up. I guess it's going to be about fifteen, and making a making a cut, cutting those in half, and then they, uh, they're gonna stack like this. Now, ultimately I'm gonna run out of lengths here soon enough, and I'm gonna have to manually crimp the ends, probably with a little twist of a pair of pliers, and that will give enough crimping that it'll continue to replicate the, uh, the previously crimped end that comes from the factory. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that length it doesn't have to be 15. I already know they don't fit inside the stove so that's not a problem. Now often what happens is uh, with the end it kind of mashes in that that slot you just have to manually kind of open it back up and from there to get these together you kind of bring the seam it's very hard to do here kind of bring the seam together like 
like this. I don't know if I can do it facing the camera. And just work your way down, all the way down, like that. And the seam comes together. And it should, all going well, should fit, fit in there together. A little squeeze, just like that. And from there, that'll continue stacking on my, I'm going to take it right off. And all these ends are essentially interchangeable without uh, too much, too much issue. Like that. So now we've got probably about four feet. I'm going to put it on the ground because I know the exhaust will have to be, oh, probably like six feet. I'd like it six feet out from the... Out from the uh, the chimney, out from the tent. Let's go cut another one up here. Lovely sound. And again, when I put it in the fire, it's going to burn off all these these tags. I'll do a final. Final sanding later. See if I can put it put it together face of the camera again. There we go. And we're definitely definitely at four feet now. We have four sections, just over a foot each, obviously. So standing on the floor on five ten. Now here's the tricky part. We're we're out of crimped sections so i'm going to try to take my pliers and somehow universally crimp the end of this around so it'll it'll fit down inside because right now it's it's just uh it's an even fit but uh we're going to try to get a pliers and, and somehow try to crimp this this will be this will be new let's see what happens now normally what i would find i don't have any but uh you also have eaves trough pliers that do the same thing and because this is so flexible that would probably work i'm going to just take a pair of needle nose pliers put them in the side and just give a quick turn and you can see it's starting to give that that rippled appearance all the way around the inside in the field i would normally have well, I would still have pliers in, in, in the sense of my multi-tool. Let's see, we're going to squeeze this together. There you go. You can kind of see the ends all crimpled in there. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. I think some of the ridges now are too tall, which makes the profile even a little wider. I'm not sure close just a second oh it worked oh just popped out just a second here that's there's catching on some of the burrs there it goes there it goes okay perfect so just with a pair of needle those pliers or uh, probably a multi-tool you can just give it a quick turn probably about i don't know not quite 90 degrees and you know what I'm gonna try one more section and that'll be it so I find when I put them together first it works better and, and uh, putting it together with your fing fingers on the seam facing away from you you get to see the top line up and then your fingers can kind of pull the seams in line and for me that works rather well a little, We'll tap there, pull it together. This is the last section. Now what I have is code got caught on my stove there. What I have also is this kind of fire suppressor, uh, kind of spark arrestor that way. And I'm also gonna crimp, crimp the end of this and that'll go on top uh, outside the stove. Keep the uh, the weather off, the rain, snow. And I lined it with some hardware cloth inside 
So that should really break up the possibility of uh, certainly larger sparks escaping. So we'll get our pliers. And this one's going to be a double-ended one, I think. So let me get a close-up of what I'm doing here. You see this here. And I'm just jumping the same width of the pliers. So where it creates that downward fold, that becomes the next alignment of the... Uh, of the pliers themselves all the way around to the seam just like that not too awful difficult just kind of roll roll it in all the way around let's see if that fits yep check it's going to fit now this is going to be the top one it'll be identified obviously by the the double-ended crimping super pretty quick now again just that you see it just kind of rolled in there and kinked in now all going well this fits in there now it's getting caught in the hardware cloth inside but I think uh, I can probably do something about that a little bit later. Once I get it lined up, it should be okay. There we go. The only thing about that, it is a little extra top heavy weight. I'm not, uh, I don't know if I like that just yet. Um, it is pretty heavy. There's quite a bit of weight there on the top, especially when it's stretched out over uh, the length of uh, length of my stovepipe, which is now quite quite tall. Let's take it outside and I'll set it up and I'll show you what it looks like. Theory, all these sections would be separate. And I have a small screw in the uh, the elbow here to stop any twisting. A lot of weight on that joint. Now, even though that joint, what I'm going to have to do is kind of when I get to the joint angled where I want it to, I might have to put a little screw or rivet because uh, even now it, uh, it becomes pretty, pretty top heavy. And it, it wants to, it wants to pivot. Well, that's, uh, that's plenty high for the hot tent. Obviously the hole would be uh, right roughly here in the tent. Um, being that this is flexible, I could probably turn it. Have my tent facing one way, dig through the side of a tent through the uh, kind of the hole, and uh, I think that would work. I don't even need this other extension. Well, it's really windy right now. Wants to pull that over. There is a fair bit of weight, more weight than you. would Think just because of how it's stretched out. So it's take down and pull it off in lengths. And to, uh, to take all these pieces apart, it's very same. Very same. You just pinch, pinch the seam, and they open up.
could take the elbow right off or uh, leave it on there. I might even mount it permanently once I get it set up with this new tent. But there you go. It's a little bundle. How many pieces do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a six piece bundle. And, um, you know, cut right. If I did cut each piece down, there's a chance they could fit them right inside. This is quite a small stove. And I think I'd have to cut the bundle down too much to make it worthwhile. But that little bundle could be probably wrapped up and uh, somehow carried. baffle too but something like that I could quickly strap that tie that in right to this uh, stove it is designed to be used like this as well with a grate on the top but uh, that's one way to tie them all together and keep them all uh, ready to assemble for next time well guys thanks for watching again a little uh hot tent stove we're going to take these pieces inside put them through the fire and really let them uh, kind of smoke and take that uh, zinc coating off but i uh, can't wait to get it set up maybe the next video we'll actually set it up in a hot tent stove and see how the whole works don't forget to click like subscribe and share thanks for watching check out the other videos up top if you're interested and uh, until next time enjoy your outdoors bye for now